Good afternoon from beautiful Esslingen, ladies and gentlemen, to wherever you are in the world right now. Welcome to Festo's exhibitor panel here at Achema Puls. Good to have you here. The topic of the next 30 minutes is how to use new digitalization components, solutions and artificial intelligence to increase plant yields. And the answers to how to delivers our Festo expert, it's Dr. Eckhard Roos, who is responsible for the industry segment and key account management for process industries globally. And here he is. Hello, Eckhard. Hello, Do. Are you prepared, besides your presentation, for the questions of the audience? Yes, of course. Of uh, course. Questions, questions are, of, are of course welcome. Perfect. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's interact. If questions appear during the presentation, please use the chat function to send them to me, and I will jump in after the presentation or at the end of the presentation and hand them over to Eckhart. So, have a lot of fun, and this is your stage. Let's okay, go. Okay, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, also a very warm welcome uh, from my side, a real warm welcome uh, out of uh, this warm location. Uh, and uh, I would like to give you an overview uh, what kind of benefits you can get as an operator or as an OEM from digitalization uh, as well as artificial intelligence, uh, addressing these topics, uh, these benefits during the whole life cycle of a plant from engineering to operation uh, and also to shutdown. Uh, you might ask yourself uh, digitalization and pneumatics because FESO is since decades very well known for pneumatic automation uh, and uh, pneumatic automation is a very robust technology but digitalization, and I would like to give you an overview on that and also take you uh, on a journey from the shop floor, from the field level to the automation level uh, up to cloud applications and also addressing at the end a few topics of uh, artificial intelligence. First of all, I would like to introduce uh, one new digital component of FESTO, a valve terminal. And again, the question is, what is new in pneumatics and digitalization? What we did is, we, let's say, transferred this approach everybody knows uh, from uh, his home, the approach of a mobile phone, uh, the methodology to pneumatic automation. And this means, to transfer or let's say to use standards, standards of hardware for example, and uh, the real functionality on a mobile phone is achieved by installing software apps. And exactly this principle we took and implemented uh, into our new products. Because everybody is doing something different uh, with a mobile phone. For example, I track the short distance between A and B. Doro uh, check, <laughs> especially uh, uh, at this weather, uh, the shortest distance from here to the next uh, ice shop. So uh, other people are booking hotels. So totally different uh, functionalities on the same hardware platform. And this is exactly what we implemented here. Usually you have an automation, a contradiction between uh, standardization on one side and flexibility on the other side. If you are flexible, you cannot use the benefits from standards. If you are standardized, you are not really flexible in operation. And exactly uh, this contra usual contradiction we resolved uh, by this new component. And I would like to give you an overview what is really behind. One uh, benefit you can immediately see uh, at the slide uh, on the screen, because uh, on the right side, you see the standardized hardware component and to make it black and white, every user can order 100 of these components beginning of the year. He do not have to know what later on the functionality will be because the functionality is defined by the installed software up down. And I think this is a clear indication what kind of benefits you can, uh, for example, achieve if you uh, use these kind of components um, in in the stock, for example, maintenance, one hardware platform, extreme uh, importance uh, and beneficial. But coming now uh, to one example, uh, you see here one example uh, which I brought with me because you can explain a lot about apps and software. Uh, sometimes a small video uh, shows it better, the benefits. You see here three actuators, and these three actuators should operate at a frequency once a second. 
And usually you uh, achieve this by adjusting throttles and so on and so on. Here they have to uh, have the same frequency, means open and close uh, at the same time. And this is done now, as you can see here in this video, in this demo, by uh, defining these frequency digitally. So you type in uh, the one second and you see the actuator operate uh, at one second. And now you have to do, do a change uh, for whatever reason. For example, one actuator should act twice as fast as the others. Again, you type it in digitally, no manual throttle adjustment uh, is necessary. And uh, what is here also beneficial, especially in the startup phase, how this works, the one second is taken for a teaching sequence of the motion terminal, so it takes five to six attempts to teach the, uh, the, the actuator in a way that the pressure profile is adjusted in a way that the one second is reached. So there is also no startup effort, uh, no startup effort, a throttle adjustment or whatever. Uh, and even better, uh, the one second is monitored during the operation. Means if you have, for example, a change uh, in the process, for example, increasing friction and the one second goes to 1.2, 1.3 seconds. Uh, the motion terminal recognizes this, and what does it mean? Uh, it adjusts automatically uh, the pressure profile in a way that the sequence comes back to one second. So I don't want to, to, to say this is an autonomous system, but at least uh, a few topics are here uh, in the area of autonomy. Uh, so this is one, th one example. Another example uh, you can see here on the lower side, it's so-called EcoApp. Everybody is actually discussing about CO2 uh, emissions reduction. Decarbonization is a topic in the whole industry and companies uh, like Bayer, for example, they announced that they want to have a carbon neutral production uh, in 2030 already. So we have to look where are the saving potentials. And using the Eco app, for example, uh, this example shows how it works. Uh, you see a linear actuator doing some movement and uh, have load on one direction and uh, moving back. Uh, this uh, linear actuator has no load at all. Usually uh, the chambers are filled by up to six bar if you have a six bar network. And if you look at the other uh, actuator with the motion app, the upper one, these chambers are not filled up uh, to six bar. It pressurization is stopped when the actuator reaches the end position. So you save compressed air, you save energy, you save money, uh, you save CO2 emissions. So a huge benefit. And you can utilize on one side uh, the whole force of the actuator, but on the other side you can save by using the motion terminal these compressed air. The other app shown here on this slide is the so-called uh, leakage app. This is for leakage detection. So in addition to the Eco app, for example, you can install the leakage app. And this means after a predefined number of sequences, let's say 1000 movements, uh, an automatic leakage detection is executed. What is the big advantage? The big advantage is uh, that you get a notification if you have a leakage. This is one thing, but you also got get notification where the leakage is. So nobody has to run around uh, to look for leakages. Uh, this saves man hours, man hours is money again. Uh, and also, of course, you save the compressed air, uh, which you, you uh, sometimes lose uh, by leakages. So uh, just uh, a few videos, but here we come now to another example. And again, I would like to encourage you I would like to encourage you to have a look what kind of apps are available because whenever we discuss with customers uh, these intelligent digital component, then we have no ideas. Uh, new ideas, sorry, no, not no ideas, new ideas. Uh, and here is one example. Uh, we have eight uh, linear actuators and what we have here is pressure control. Pressure control of these linear actuators and this means force control. And I will use one example. You can uh, do a force control, for example, manually. Just look at this one here. Now you can see it moves. This is what many customers still do, adjustment uh, by this uh, pressure regulator. You can do it also digitally, just by moving 
here uh, these bars right left up and down so you can do it digitally and of course you can do and run smart programs you can predefine sequences of operation and these predefined sequences operation are then executed you can see here different forces different forces at different times and they are act totally independent again only another application uh, we can talk uh, a lot about uh, new applications and uh, again i would like to encourage you to contact us with this i would like to move now to the next uh, dynamic display oh sorry i forgot one thing uh, maybe this is the important topic because what you can see here is the co2 emission savings uh, I mentioned the CO2 emission savings and uh, you can see on the left side parameters uh, and the pneumatic actuator, the BFPD40 with the butterfly valve. And you can see on the right side the CO2 footprint. On the x-axis you see years, means this is a accumulated uh, CO2 footprint which is shown here. The upper, uh, let's say, uh, footprint is a traditional automation, means single solenoid valves, actuators, and filling up the chambers to six bar, for example, if you have a six bar network. The lower uh, slide shows using the VTEM. And for a period of 10 years, you can already reduce your CO2 footprint in this application with 20 cycles uh, per hour by more than 50%. And again, this is CO2 footprint, but you can also, you can also, of course, save the related money and all the other advantages uh, with the uh, motion app, eco app, as well as the leakage detection. With the next uh, slide, I would like to take you now. Uh, I would like to take you now from the field level. The motion terminal is on the field level. I would like to take you up to the automation level and also into the cloud. You can see here uh, a mining application, two production modules, one with a quarter turn actuator, butterfly valves, I will come to this later on, and also another one uh, with different automation principles uh, here. We have the superior system with the HMI, uh, the human machine interface. Uh, we have here also uh, one PLC from Festo uh, and an air preparation unit. And I would like to spend now one minute uh, on this air preparation unit. Uh, air preparation uh, is clear, is old, uh, you have to clean the air uh, and so on, you, you uh, control the pressure. And you can send, uh, if you use a digital air preparation unit, these kind of data using uh, IoT gateways up to the cloud. Why this makes sense? First of all, uh, you can uh, measure uh, your air consumption and uh, you know the famous sentence, uh, you can also only improve, uh, you can only improve uh, what uh, you are measuring. Uh, so here uh, is a measurement, this is one uh, topic. The other topic is one of our customers, uh, he's using this uh, air preparation unit not only uh, for uh, one um, production line, but also for three production lines. So his purpose is uh, comparing the consumption uh, of one production line to the other production line and then calculating the factors consumed uh, air uh, divided by produced goods. These kind of factors can give indications when the next maintenance should take place. This is one thing. Also, he can detect the best of class of his three production lines running in parallel. And this makes uh, even more sense if you have maybe production lines uh, all over the globe. Then you can compare uh, the air consumption in Brazil uh, production line to Germany, to India. And uh, I always uh, give a recommendation to uh, operators. Uh, this is very easy. Uh, this can give you a first opportunity to step into digitalization and also uh, in using cloud applications for performance improvements. Uh, why it is easy? Because air preparation units uh, are available on nearly every site. You just have to take uh, the old one out, bring the new one in. Uh, and uh, then you can start uh, first experiences 
uh, using these kind of air preparation units uh, in the cloud. Very easy, very simple, no risk for the production process. So with this, uh, I would like to uh, step uh, to this display. What you have here is, uh, I mentioned already, a PLC with remote IOs. We have a quarter turn actuator. We have our new CMSH positioner. Uh, I will not give a lot of details on that because uh, this is already explained in special uh, sessions. Uh, only a few topics. Uh, safety functionality is included. It's integrated. Um, Two-wire um, hard protocol. Uh, all these topics are available, field bus uh, connectivity. Uh, what I would like to mention here is the special standardized interface, special standardized interface to the actuator. This is one thing. So you can see that there is no tubing, no piping at all. Uh, so again, saving money, saving costs, uh, and saving also uh, potential leakages in the future. Here we have uh, our so-called uh, VTOP, uh, means we have here functionalities integrated like air preparation, uh, like a solenoid valve, in this case for safety applications, uh, manual uh, valves and so on. And again, here you can add functionalities without additional tubing uh, or piping. Again, a uh, huge benefit. Also, of course, uh, you can use it for linear actuators as it's shown here. Now I come to the topic uh, I would like to stress now. Uh, and uh, with this, uh, I would like to switch now to artificial intelligence. You see here modules. Um, let's say automated in the more traditional way, means uh, remote IOs but no, no PLC uh, in this module. Uh, when we go to the next module, you see a different way uh, of doing this. Different way means uh, we have a PLC on site, uh, we have remote IOs, we have valve terminals, uh, and we have here the two linear actuators. So it means we have the whole, the whole automation equipment in this module, and this module can run uh, independently even when the connectivity to the superior system is disconnected. Uh, but what has it now to do with artificial intelligence? Uh, I would like to mention that I will address now the topic of machine learning. There is no time to use also or to, to give an explanation on the others. I will address machine learning and machine learning, you can install these kind of tools on edge in the cloud or also uh, on premise, depending on the kind of investigations you will do. You remember that I mentioned uh, the air preparation consumption comparison between Brazil and uh, Germany and India. This doesn't make sense uh, to do by a tool installed on Edge. Uh, this has to be done in the cloud. But what you can see here is uh, an installation of the PLC and these kind of tools we can install here directly on the PLC. And this gives more value uh, even for investigation of the performance of these kind of devices. What you can do now uh, if you install it here, uh, you can, for example, uh, monitor the number of operating hours. Okay, you can monitor the number uh, changing of directions of these actuators in their movement. Okay, you can uh, monitor the speed. Uh, and you can monitor the maximum speed, and then you can try to get additional information out of it. What is the real value afterwards is to combine, to combine all these monitored data. And I will use one example. We have here a flotation cell. Flotation cell is a vessel, uh, and uh, usually you have two holes uh, at the bottom of this flotation cell, um, and this. Uh, Holes in the bottom are controlled by a dart valve. Uh, and the dart valve you can see here. Sometimes you have the problem that uh, there is a stone in the hole uh, and the dart is not able to reach uh, the bottom. Uh, and these kind uh, of uh, things you can detect this kind of uh, malfunctions you can detect by combining uh, two values. For example, the pressure in the chambers uh, and the position of the dart valve. So if you reach the pressure already, be the maximum pressure before the dart valve reaches the lowest position, 
then of course you have a problem. Uh, and I would like to show you this now. And I, uh, hopefully it works. Ah, oh, it's already, okay. I move now uh, the dart valve manually down. You see, it's moving down. It is not able to reach the end position. And uh, you can see this now by a small uh, alarm indicator, uh, a little small alarm indicator shown here on the upper left side of the actuator. We will, uh, uh, we will blow this up later on to, to have it more clear. But the functionality is clear. The functionality uh, is that we can detect these kind of abnormal behavior uh, of the overall production plant by combining these two values. And this you can do here using uh, these kind of uh, in intelligence in the field. I would like to give you now uh, another example. This is the automotive industry. Uh, th this one was from the process industry. This is automotive industry. Again, uh, welding process, two pieces come together, are welded on this location. Uh, they are fixed by seven pneumatic actuators. After the welding process, uh, this one piece now is taken away. The next one is fixed. Uh, and then seven actuators fix it again. Uh, you can imagine if one actuator fails, you have a loss of productivity because this operation happens every 1.5 minutes. And you can imagine how long it takes to, to go for an actuator, replace it, and so on. So you have a loss of production. Uh, what we did is we measured a certain number of times, times for electrical energization of the solenoid valve and actuator leaving the end position, and the next time is reaching the other end position, and vice versa. And then we can detect, for example, if we simulate leakages, if we simulate friction, if you simulate, for example, a drop in the supply pressure, we can uh, simulate how these values change. And this is very clear, uh, a big advantage, uh, because uh, you can see on the changes of the errors if the times becomes longer or becomes shorter. And uh, means artificial intelligence, in this case machine learning, give the opportunity on one side to detect abnormal behavior. Uh, this is one thing, but even looking at the change uh, of the direction of the arrows, it is able to get a first indication what might be the problem. And uh, we are pretty sure uh, that we can, let's say, predict these kind of failures already a certain period of time before it really happens. And what is the advantage of this? The advantage is that you can move uh, failures of the production uh, to a bland downtime schedule and then replace the actuator which is affected uh, by these kind of problems. So uh, from our point of view, this is a clear basis uh, a necessity to also implement predictive maintenance concepts in your plant. And everybody's talking about predictive maintenance. Predictive maintenance gives huge advantages uh, from cost perspective compared to preventive maintenance. With this, I would like to close uh, and hope uh, that I gave you uh, a short overview from the field level, the VTEM, up to the cloud application, uh, ending here uh, with machine learning concepts on edge and what kind of benefits you can get out of the implementation of these uh, machine learning concepts. And thank you. And I'm open for your question, if there are any. So, so are, I just run are you already on the way to the ice <laughs> shop? <laughs> I am. How do you know that I love ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> Can you see that? <laughs> Everybody loves <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> You're so right, <laughs> Eckhart. Just joking. Thank you very much for these uh, great insights, for these look around to all our highlights. For sure, we received questions. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for that. I have maybe to move a bit um, that everybody can see me.
best. First question, Eckhart, why are life cycle costs still not yet implemented in the decision making process, even for larger investments? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Uh, you remember that I presented the two CO2 footprints mm -hmm. uh, and the CO2 footprint I mentioned is one thing uh, yeah. where you can get improvements. The costs are uh, the other th topic where yeah. you can get improvements. But uh, unfortunately, these VTAM, these motion terminal is, let's say, from the automation concept, from the investment, depending on the uh, solution, 15, 20 percent higher. Okay. compared to the traditional automation concept. But um, due to the savings afterwards, yes, you can save costs a lot, but, but we have also other examples calculated, but unfortunately, life cycle cost evaluations are still not implemented in the decision-making process. Okay. Still, most, most of the companies decide on the investment costs. Mm -hmm. This is one thing. Uh, and also still the companies look for, let's say, uh, a smaller ROI, return on invest periods. Mm -hmm. And you m must imagine uh, these kind of um, applications have to compete also with investments in logistics, uh, in marketing, in other topics, yes, and usually the other ones have smaller ROEs. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure that the whole CO2 emission discussion now, uh, how to reduce it, will give a push in this direction. There is a lot of happening in that yeah. case. And you also know, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the Swabian part. We know how to spare costs, right? <laughs> 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 That's what everybody says, the yeah. people in the Swabian I I region. Would I would also would like one marketing comment. Uh, I have a session tomorrow morning uh, addressing the CO2 topic and how to reduce the CO2 footprint, discussing about the CO2 in more detail. Mm -hmm. But give you one, one statement. Uh, from last year to 2030, we have to save in Germany 40% of our CO2 emissions That's so within mm. nine years. Mm -hmm. 40%. The whole the whole sectors means power plants, means traffic, Everything. means uh, uh, industry also. And industry was not so much saving in the past. Mm -hmm. Not so easy to again invite you tomorrow morning nine o'clock. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, check out our agenda for tomorrow. There are many interesting sessions to go, but 9 o'clock, Dr. <laughs> Eckhard Rose again with the next presentation. We have three minutes to go. There is one more question, Eckhard. Oh, no, there are more. My God, no. How do you see the demographic change in Germany and how can digitalization support this process? And what is FESTO itself doing in digitalization in the production? <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is uh, again a good question. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, uh, one topic um, is not really seen by most of the people and I would like to, to uh, emphasize uh, this topic in the beginning. Uh, we have a democratic, demographic change mm. and uh, uh, we will have a fight for talents in the near future. Mm -hmm. And fight for talents means you must be as a company also attractive uh, for people to work in this company. Mm. And uh, implementing digitalization in the own production processes, uh, this is one thing, for example, to make, uh, let's say, young people uh, attracted uh, by the company. Because uh, if someone is in an old-fashioned company and he is using uh, the high-end tools in his home, then of course this company is not attractive. So it's a differentiator uh, in this competition, this is one thing. Uh, of course, we as Festo, uh, we are using this kind of equipment uh, also in our own production because mm. we are in the situation that on one side we produce it for the market, we yeah. develop it for the market, but also we use it in our own production. Makes sense. So uh, if you uh, have the chance, uh, I would like also to invite you uh, to have a tour in Scharnhausen where you can see how we produce it. So if someone is running around with a tablet, for example, uh, knows all the consumptions of the machines he is in front of and so on. Uh, this is one thing. And the other thing is we have a um, so-called uh, also draining factory mm. uh, within the factory mm -hmm. uh, because we have Festo Didactic uh, as a separate part of the company um, and they develop um, draining concepts uh, and uh, also give consulting. Mm. Uh, and uh, they use these kind or we use these kind of uh, draining factories in our factory so we can drain 
changes we do the to the real production in this training factory before we do it in the real production. Mm -hmm. And the big advantage is uh, that you do not have to travel somewhere to get a training course and yeah. so on and so on. You can do it in the factory, you go five meters, and then you can do it in the real production. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. Eckhard Roos. Time is up, ladies and gentlemen. See you hopefully tomorrow at 9 at Eckhard's second presentation. Stay tuned. We have another one this afternoon. Bye-bye, and thank you, Eckhard Roos. Thank you.